Fall is an awesome time of the year for foraging as we get access to many things that are not available in other times of the year. In some cases, a plant that can be used in other times of the year will have parts that are best harvested in the fall, like the roots for example. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about each plant or mushroom and their uses for either food or medicine, as well as cover some harvesting tips. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Number five is Echinacea or the Coneflower. Echinacea angustifolia, better known as coneflower, is a very beautiful plant that is native to the United States. It frequently grows in fields, clearings, and prairie-like environments. There are a few different varieties of coneflower, but we are specifically talking about the angustifolia variety in this video, so please keep that in mind. The coneflower can grow to about 4 or 5 feet tall and has very striking purple to pink flowers that grow somewhat conical in shape, giving rise to its common name. The fall and late summer is a great time of year to harvest this plant and the root is what most people go for, but rest assured you can also use the leaves, flowers, and stem as well if they are in good shape. Commonly used in teas or my favorite, tinctures, it is used to help fight off colds and flus and is very highly regarded in many countries around the world for this purpose. Generally seen as an immune boosting herb, it has other properties too, like being good for helping to heal wounds and treat insect bites. Like most herbs where you use the root, it's best to dig it up in the fall after the first hard frost, but personally I have also used it from late summer, so there is a little bit of variation in when you can harvest this root from late summer all the way until the late fall. Number four is Queen Anne's Lace or the Wild Carrot. Wild Carrot, which also goes by Queen Anne's Lace or Dacus Carota, is a very common plant found everywhere from clearings, fields, gardens, lawns, edges of trails, and anywhere else it'll grow. It's a very hardy plant and it can be used as food or medicine. For food, the root is commonly sought after, but in the early summer and late spring, you can also use the stems for a crunchy-like snack. However, since we are talking about fall uses today, the root is what we are after. It's best to take the first year roots, as in the second year they get rather tough and woody. Since the plant is a biennial, it's rather easy to tell the first year plant from the second year plant because first year plants will not have a stem, whereas the second year plant will send up its stem for flowering and seeding. Please keep in mind that these seeds are not abort efficient, so it's best to avoid using them in those who are pregnant or trying to become pregnant. The root can be used like the domestic carrot for food, and even though it is small, it does pack a potent and flavorful punch. When using the root for food, it is important to keep in mind that the inside thread is the best part for eating, but it's more for flavor than using it for substance like we would with the domestic carrot. The root can also be brewed into tea or made into tincture for a diuretic if one requires the need to urinate. Lastly, it's important to mention that before you harvest wild carrot, you need to know how to tell it apart from poison hemlock and water hemlock as well as yarrow. The hemlocks are deadly poisonous and using the root of yarrow for food in a stew will end in quite bitter disappointment, so it's best to know the identification of all four plants so you can separate them while foraging. Number three is the burdock. Now there are two main species of burdock that one might come across in the wild. One is the great burdock and the other is common burdock. Thankfully though they can both be used in the same way so that's helpful for us foragers. The root of the burdock plants are used for food and medicine and is generally the most popularized part of the plant, though the leaves and seeds also have some use. For medicine, the root is best dug in the fall and it is traditionally used to aid digestion and to increase stomach bile. It can also be used as a diuretic to help support the kidneys and liver. There are other traditional uses for the burdock root, like for treating rheumatism and gout ailments. Externally, the root is great as a wash for acne, boils, and abscesses, but it can also help with the irritating itch of eczema. Used all over the world for thousands of years, burdock is also considered a blood purifier in traditional medicine and is high in inulin, which has led to recent research focusing on its use for diabetics. The seeds and leaves contain some antibacterial properties, so they are quite effective at helping to clean up cuts or wounds, and can be used with the root for washing the face or even used in making of soaps. For food, one can dig up the root from the middle of summer all the way to the late fall, giving it quite a big range of time to collect it. The root can just simply be treated like you would a potato by peeling and removing any unsightly parts. Afterwards, you can boil it as a standalone root vegetable, or you can throw it into soups or stews to add a nice starchy boost to the broth. 
Number two is acorns. Oh, the humble acorn. Where to begin with this amazing nut? There are loads of acorn species out there, and not all are going to produce acorns that you might find acceptable. But in my personal experience here in central Indiana, I have found that acorns from the white oak or the red oak seem to provide the best harvest for me. Acorns have a special place in the world of foraging due to their many uses for food and medicine and their high sustainability. Acorns in the oak trees themselves have a chemical called tannic acid in them that makes them rather bitter. Before using your acorns for food, it is important to leach out this bitter tannic acid, otherwise it will be a rather terrible experience for everybody involved. Thankfully, this is overall rather easy to do, even though it can be time-consuming. I should mention that there are a couple different ways to do this that will result in a slightly different product, so please be aware of that, and I highly suggest researching both methods thoroughly before you prepare your acorns. The acorn has long been a staple in the diets of many Native American tribes as it's loaded with good fats and proteins. It makes various types of flatbreads and is good for desserts and gravies as well. The tannic acid itself has medicinal uses as an astringent and is also antibacterial in nature, so it is rather good for wounds. Acorns have even been used to brew a sort of beer-like item by colonial settlers and some native tribes alike. So whenever you're out looking in the woods in the fall, be sure to collect yourself some acorns and try these amazing, delicious nuts. Many people just walk right by them and then never pick them up. Number one is the hen of the woods or the maitake mushroom. The hen of the woods or maitake mushroom is a rather large mushroom that can grow to over 50 pounds. In the eastern United States, it commonly grows in the fall and is found on old growth oak trees. The cool thing about this relationship is that we can get two different products from it in the fall. We can get the mushrooms and we can get the acorns from the trees that the mushrooms themselves grow upon. This is one of the many reasons why fall can be a great time for foraging because of the abundance of food that is quite hearty and nutritious. The maitake is also good for medicine and is seen much use as an immune booster when taken in teas or tinctures. In fact, it's so good for the immune system that it has been used in research for cancer patients and those suffering from HIV and AIDS. The maitake is easy to identify and can be used either fresh or dried for food or medicine, but everyone has their own personal preferences, so do not be afraid to experiment. Being a polypore mushroom, it's important to check the size of the pores when harvesting to ensure that they are small and tight, which will indicate that the mushroom is fresh and still young. Older specimens become tough and woody, but it can still be used if no other issues like mold or bacterial growth are present. So there's my list of the five best things to forage in the fall, and I hope this video has helped some of you guys out and to understand that the fall can be a really, really good time of year to forage wild plants and mushrooms. I thank all of you guys for watching this, and I will see you in the next one. Stay tuned!